Simplifying complex fractions. A complex fraction is just a fraction that contains another fraction in the numerator, the denominator, or both. This is what a complex fraction looks like. Here we have 4 fifths over 7 tenths. So we have a fraction in the numerator and a fraction in the denominator. But remember that the fraction bar is really just the same thing as a division bar. So we can also say that this fraction is being divided by this fraction. And another way that we could write it would be if we take the numerator and we say that it's being divided by the denominator. Now, remember that we cannot divide fractions. We have to multiply by the reciprocal. So in order to simplify this, we would rewrite this as four-fifths four times 10 over 7. And then we could either just multiply straight across or we could reduce and then multiply, which would be the easiest. If I want to reduce first, 5 will go into 10 two times, and then I just multiply 4 times 2, which is 8 over 7. And that would be my answer. So that's how we deal with complex fractions. So look, let's look at some that have um, variables in it or that are a little more complicated. Okay, so here is a complex fraction that lo looks a little more complicated because it has variables in it. But it's still just a fraction being divided by another fraction. So if we have a fraction being divided by a fraction, we can just rewrite it as the numerator times the reciprocal of the denominator. Because remember, we, we can't divide a fraction by a fraction. We have to multiply by its reciprocal. Okay, so the, now that we've rewritten it, we can reduce um, things that are on in the uh, numerator with things that are in the denominator. Okay, so I see an x in the numerator. That will cancel out with the x that's in the denominator. Then we have one y in the numerator and three y's in the denominator. So one of those will cancel out in each. Okay, so that y to the third on the bottom becomes a y squared. Okay, and then this three will go into 6 two times. So let's see what is left. In the numerator, the only thing that's left is the 5. In the denominator, we have 2y squared. And then we also have this 2 that's in the second term. So times 2. And then don't forget about this negative sign. So since we multiplied a positive fraction times a negative fraction, that means that our answer is going to be negative. All right, so what does our answer look like? Our answer would be negative 5 over 4y squared. And then we're done. All right, the first two examples that we looked at... Um, we had a fraction in the numerator and a fraction in the denominator, and so all we had to do was divide the numerator by the denominator. Well, here we have two fractions in the numerator and two fractions in the denominator. So before we can do anything else, we have to get each part of the fraction into a single fraction. So that means my numerator, all of this stuff on top has to become one fraction, and all of this stuff on the bottom has to become another fraction. And then we can multiply by the reciprocal. So don't get overwhelmed. We're just going to deal with the top first. So forget that there's anything in the denominator. Let's just look at the stuff in the numerator and deal with it. Okay, so if I look at the 3 fourths and the 7 eighths, um, in order to put those together, they're being subtracted. So in order to put them together, I have to get a common denominator. I can't add or subtract my fractions unless they have a common denominator. So the least common denominator between 4 and 8 would be 8. So I'm going to multiply this first fraction, both the numer numerator and denominator, times 2. Okay, so if I do that, then I get 6 over 8 minus 7 over 8. Okay, and then I'm going to put those together now that I have a common denominator and I get a negative 1 over 8. Okay, once I get it down to a single fraction, I'm done with that part of the complex fraction. Okay, so now I can move down to the denominator. 
in the denominator, um, the least common denominator would be 6. So I need to multiply that first fraction times 2 to get the least common denominator. So if I multiply both the numerator and the denominator times 2, I get 2 over 6 minus 1 over 6. Okay, and then when I put those together, I get a positive 1 over 6. So now I'm down to a single fraction divided by a single fraction. Okay, so like I said, that was our goal. Once we get a single fraction divided by a single fraction, we just take the top one and divide or multiply it times the reciprocal of the bottom. Okay, so this would be my top uh, fraction, which is a negative 1 over 8. And I'm going to multiply it by the reciprocal of the denominator, so that would be 6 over 1. And that would give me a negative 6 over 8, which would reduce to a 3 over 4. Oh, wait. That should be negative. Okay, because it was a negative 1 over 8 times a positive 6 over 1, so that was a negative 6 over 8, which would be a negative 3 over 4. Okay, okay, so that's my answer. Okay, here is another example. And again, I have multiple fractions in the numerator and in the denominator. So remember, the first thing we have to do is get a single fraction in the numerator and a single fraction in the denominator. So if I look at my numerator, the least common denominator would be 3x. So that means I need to multiply the first fraction, the, the numerator and the denominator of the first fraction times x, and the numerator and denominator of the second fraction times 3. Okay, so that would give me x, 1 times x is x, over 3x, plus 1 times 3 is 3, over 3x. So now that I have a common denominator, I can add the numerators. And since they're not like terms, I can't really add them, but that gives me x plus 3 over 3x. And that is a single fraction. Even though I have two terms in the numerator, that's still one single fraction. And that's my goal. Okay, so let's um, move down to the bottom. And we're going to do the same thing. The least common denominator the least common denominator in the denominator is 2x. So I'm going to multiply the first fraction times x and the second fraction times 2. Okay, so that gives me x over 2x minus 2 over 2x. And when I put those together, I get x minus 2 over 2x. Okay, so again, I have a single fraction divided by a single fraction. So I'm going to put those together. I'm going to take the first fraction, and it stays in the same order. Now remember, anytime we have numbers that are stuck together by pluses or minuses, um, that's a binomial, and they're stuck together. We can't cancel out or reduce them separately. So I like to put parentheses around them just to remind myself that they're stuck together. All right, so that's over 3x, and it's times the reciprocal of the bottom. So I'm going to flip the bottom, and I get 2x over x minus 2. And again, that's a binomial. Okay, so let's see what we can reduce or cancel out. Well, the x's that are connected to uh, the single terms, the 3x, that x, and then the 2x. Those x's can cancel. But the other ones can't because they're connected to something with a plus or minus. So really that's all that can be reduced. So my solution would be 2x plus 3 over 3x minus 2. And that's it. All right, let's look at one last example. Um, both of these, or, or this complex fraction, has a single fraction in the numerator and a single fraction in the denominator. 
So we don't have to um, get like terms and combine our terms. Um, we can already move on to the second step, which is to divide the numerator by the denominator or multiply by its reciprocal. Okay, so I can go ahead and take the numerator, which is 6x minus 3 over 5x squared. And I'm going to multiply it times the 2, no, hold on, times the 10x over 2x minus 1. Okay, but before I can do that, before I can multiply these um, rational expressions, I need to simplify. So let's look at each part and see if we can simplify anything. Well, if I look here, um, both of these terms, 6 and 3, can be divided by 3. So I can factor out a 3. All right, so let me do that. If I factor out a 3, then I'm left with 2x minus 1. Okay, so then if I look here at this 10x, there's nothing I can do to that. Ooh, sorry. There's nothing I can do to that. Um, if I look here, there's nothing I can do to that. And the 2x minus 1, there's no uh, greatest common factor or anything, so it's completely factored also. Okay, so now that I have completely factored everything, let me just go ahead and rewrite it all. Okay, now let's see what can cancel out or divide out. Well, the 2x minus 1s, remember this is a binomial that's stuck together, so this 2x minus 1 and this 2x minus 1 um, can cancel out. 5 can go into 10 two times. And then this x will cancel one of these x's out in the bottom. All right, what's left? In the numerator, I have a 3 here and a 2 here. So 3 times 2, that's 6 over, the only thing in the bottom is x. And that's my answer, 6 over x.